Now we're going to be answering uh, probability questions involving conditional probability. Now on the first problem we are given a table and in this table um, it represents students who've been asked if they have ear piercings or uh, no ear piercings. So it's divided between the male and the female students and the total number of participants in this particular experiment was 178 students and that will be our total sample space for the survey. Now to answer the first question, what's the probability that the student selected is a male student? So the probability that the student selected is a male student is simply using the total number of male participants, which is 90, divided by the sample space of 178. And again, you're going to be using a calculator to solve for this probability. So to convert the fraction to decimal, it will equal to point five zero five eight and this is the probability that when we select a student at random it would be a male student based on this survey and for this one what's the probability that it's a male student and has pierced ears so in this probability since we're looking for a specific student who happens to be a male with ear piercing it will be the intersection of male and ear piercing which is 19 so 19 is our number of success and the total sample space will still be 178 because there's no condition in this particular uh, probability question so 19 divided by 178 will equal to 0 0.1067 and for the third probability what's the probability that it's a male student or has pierced ears. So in this case, we're going to be selecting a particular student and this time the successful student in this probability would be a pick or a selected male student or with ear piercing, regardless of course of the gender. So the male student in total is 90 and then we'll add the ear piercing students or students with ear piercing which happens to be 84 divided by the sample space of 178. So if you add this up, it will equal to 174 all over 178 and the probability is 0 0.975, 9775. And this, the difference between the end operation and the OR operation in a probability model. Now for letter D, we're computing for the probability that it's a male given has pierced ears. So this one is the conditional statement wherein we are selecting a student given that he has ear piercing. So it's going to be male given ear pierce or piercing. So the probability would change because, or the sample space will now change because our sample space would be students with ear piercing because of the condition. So ear piercing has 103 total students with ear piercing and it needs to be a male with ear piercing. So it will be the intersection of male and ear piercing, which is 19. So 19 over 103 is going to give us 0.1844 and this is the probability of this conditional statement or probability question. Now for letter E, the probability question is already in the probability notation. So all we have to do is to use the denominator of the female student, total female students, which is 88. And the condition is that the probability of that given female student has ear piercing. So female and ear piercing is 84. So the probability of that is going to be 0.9545. And this is how we answer conditional probability given a table. Now for the second experiment, we are given students who eats breakfast regularly and doesn't eat breakfast regularly. So they ask male and female students here again and we're going to be answering these probability based on the table. So for the first probability, what's the probability that the student selected is a male? So the total number of male student is 320 divided by the total number of students in the survey which is 595. 
and it's equal to 0.5378. And for problem letter B, female and and eats breakfast regularly, so it will be the intersection of female eats breakfast regularly, which is 110. And the denominator will not change, it's still going to be 595 because this is not a conditional statement. And it will equal to 0.1848. And for problem letter C, we're looking for male or eats breakfast regularly so we're going to be using the sample of male students which is 320 added to the sample who eats breakfast regularly which is 110 divided by 595 and if you add this up and divide it by 595 it will equal to 0 0.722 and 6 so again this one is the OR statement so you will add the male students and the students who eat breakfast regularly and for letter D this one is a conditional probability or conditional statement because of this symbol so if with this symbol we know that the denominator would be the students who eat breakfast regularly who happens to be a male so this will be eats breakfast regularly of 300 and the intersection of male and eats breakfast regularly, male eats breakfast regularly is 190, which is equal to 0.6333. And for problem letter E, this time you need to make sure how the conditional statement works for letter E, because here the selected student is a female who doesn't eat breakfast regularly which means the given condition is that the student selected is a female so if we change this to a conditional probability notation it will be eats breakfast given female because that is our condition which means the denominator will be the number of female students which is 275 and the intersection of female students who eat breakfast regularly, which is 110. And this one will give us 110, I'm sorry, who doesn't eat breakfast. Who doesn't eat breakfast is 165. I'm sorry, 165. So 165 over 275 is going to be 0.60 or 60%. And for the last problem, this one is a student who eats breakfast regularly given it's a female. So again, our condition is that it's supposed to be a female student. So we already picked a female student and eats breakfast who eats breakfast regularly. So our denominator will, will still be the female student, which is 275. And the intersection of female student who eats breakfast regularly is 110. And in this case, 110 divided by 275 is going to be 0.40, or the complement of the probability of letter E. And this is how we answer probability using conditional statement.